know your IS code provisions short lecture series. In this lecture, I will discuss about clause number 6.1.1, that is ground motion. Earthquake ground motion is a complex phenomenon. So there are several factors which affect earthquake ground motion. So what are the earthquake ground motion parameters and what are the factors which affect these parameters? So that will be discussed in this lecture and how the complex ground motion uh, is resolved into components for design purpose and also how uh, the vertical ground motion or vertical component is to be considered in design. So these things will be discussed in this lecture. So let's go into the details. Yeah, so clause number 6.1.1, that is ground motion. So what code clause says is the characteristics that is intensity or amplitude that is. So the characteristics, intensity, duration, and frequency content of seismic ground vibrations expected at any site depend on magnitude of earthquake, its focal depth, epicentral distance, characteristics of the path through which the seismic waves travel and soil strata on which the structure is founded. All these things affect the characteristics of earthquake ground motion. So uh, in short, the characteristics are amplitude, duration, and frequency content. These are the three characteristics. And what are the factors which are affecting uh, these three characteristics? They are source, path, and site. These are the three things. So let's look into those things, overall effects. So you can see this is source and this is path and our site is here. So in that, say there are soil layer, different different soil layers and bedrock kind of thing. So thickness of the local site and the flexibility or stiffness of the local site. So they also contribute. So how these parameters, how these uh, uh, parameters affect the ground motion characteristics. If you look at that, Let's look at these three uh, earthquake characteristics. That is earthquake ground motion characteristics. Amplitude is one thing. So amplitude we can measure in terms of peak ground acceleration, peak ground velocity, or peak ground displacements. Okay. So since our code is force based, the code up, uh, adopts force based approach. It is peak ground acceleration. So that is amplitude. Second is duration. So duration is duration of strong ground motion uh, shaking. And then we are not going into the details how the duration is uh, computed. So we'll do that in another short lecture. And then the frequency content. So how to get the frequency content? You can take the ground motion signal and uh, take the uh, Fourier transform of that signal. And whatever is the band where predominant frequencies are present, that is the frequency content or frequency band of the earthquake ground motion. Now, how these three parameters are affected by three uh, like parameters, that is characteristics are affected by parameters, that is source uh, parameters, path parameter, and local effects. In local effects, two, two things are there, thickness of the soil layers and the stiffness of the soil layers. Like if we look at say, if source, that means magnitude, so if the magnitude of the earthquake increases or the intensity of or magnitude of the earthquake increases, what happens to these three parameters or the characteristics? So amplitude increases, obviously, duration of strong ground motion also increases and frequency content also increases. Now, if we look at say path, so if path increases, that means the distance, if distance increases because of the attenuation, the amplitude of the ground motion reduces. So that's how it is. And the duration. So how the duration increases? Because the gap between P wave and S wave arrival time at the site increases. That's why duration of the strong ground motion increases. And then the frequency content. So here it is written, it is it reduces. Actually, this, this redu reduction will be slightly misleading. What will happen is, when path increases, so 
from the source, say if uh, short period waves and long period waves. So short period waves means high frequency waves, long period wave means low frequency waves. So both start from the source till the site is reached. Suppose say if it is long distance, what happens is because of many, many cycles of high frequency waves or short period waves, they will die out because of the damping, because of damping which is present in the uh, medium. So that's why say uh, like uh, high frequency waves will die out at a longer distances and the low frequency waves that is long period waves will uh, remain, but amplitude of that rate also reduces. That's what it is given here, amplitude reduces. And here high frequency waves will die out and low frequency waves will still be there. So, and then coming to local effects. So thickness, so thickness of the site, all the uh, like uh, effects are similar to the path effects. And when it comes to the stiffness of the site or the flexibility of the site, soil layers. So if flexibility, sorry, if, if stiffness increases, then amplitude reduces. So stiffness increases means amplitude reduces and duration also reduces and frequency content. So high frequency views, so they increase. Increase means they'll be retained like that only. So these are the uh, characteristics of earthquake ground motion and the parameters on which they depend. Then the next one is the random earthquake ground motions which cause the structure to oscillate can be resolved in any three mutually perpendicular directions. So the random signal can be resolved in three mutually perpendicular directions. So that is say, assume that this is a building. So we have say, we can resolve that ground motion into say X component, Y component and vertical component, three uh, components. So usually uh, the horizontal components, that is the horizontal components are predominant are mostly used for design uh, unless otherwise some specific cases are there where vertical components will become uh, more important. So vertical components become more important in usually in near fault regions. And also depending on the type of the structure, if it is a long structure, so then also vertical shaking will be important. So next one is effects of earthquake induced vertical shaking can be significant for overall stability analysis of structures, especially in structures where there are large spans are there in the structure. So in that case, vertical ground motion, vertical component will uh, affect the behavior of this, that such kind of uh, elements or structures. And also those in which the stability is the criterion for uh, design. So dams, embankments, such kind of uh, things. So I've done a uh, lecture, short lecture on clause number 6.3.3. You may look into it. This is on vertical uh, ground motion. So next is, <clears throat> a reduction in gravity force due to vertical ground motions can be detrimental, particularly in pre-stressed horizontal members, cantilevered members, and gravity structures. First of all, let's look at say, like how the vertical ground motion affects. Let's take say vertical component has uh, say 0.3 G, but uh, in general buildings always experience 1 G vertical motion, 1G ground motion downwards, 1G. So if this uh, vertical oscillation of 0.3G is uh, occurring because of the earthquake, that means up and down. So 0.3 up, 0.3 down. So that means what our ground motion, that is the building is experiencing uh, acceleration ranging from 0.7G to 1.3G. So one plus or minus 0.3G, 1G plus or minus 0.3G means 0 0.7 up to 1.3 uh, G. <clears throat> but we need to uh, uh, like uh, understand or note that already, so for the dead load, this 1.5 load factor is already there for gravity loads. So we need not re uh, do the reduction because of this upward motion and downward motion of uh, uh, ground motion. Okay. And then coming to this, uh, but in pre-stressed uh, horizontal or uh, cantilevered members or gravity structures. So like it is uh, important to understand the detrimental effects if we reduce the gravity loads. 
sorry, reduce the uh, the gravity load. Yeah, and special attention shall be paid to the effects of vertical ground motion on pre-stressed or cantilever beams and girders. Girders. So the, the intention of this short lecture is to help students and practicing engineers to understand IS code provisions in a better manner. And following references have been used in the preparation of these slides. So thank you.